Hey, welcome to episode 1 or 2 of the Twim Show. This is your host, Sajid Islam, and today I'll be going over the notable news and updates from the week of March 28, uh, 2022. Okay, today, first off, we are going to start off with LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn has announced or actually introduced uh, of quite a few features to help us creators better analyze our post and f- so that we can do create better content. So first thing over there, what they have is they are rolling out uh, an uh, improved post analytics. Uh, you know, it took me a while to look that up. Um, so basically, uh, the post analysis is basically adding a new level of details. Uh, what their LinkedIn is saying, members will see analytics detailed in a summary page along with more in-depth data like impressions and reshares. This data is available for all post types, whether it's an article, video, or simple text post. Okay. And then LinkedIn also is offering a new data on profile video views as well, as well as updated profile video capabilities to help users grow their audience. By users, we mean members. By members, we mean creators, depending on how you look at it, but they're all interchangeably the same. Uh, along with this improved view numbers, LinkedIn will also provide new prompts to help users decide what to publish in their profile video. Now, keep in mind, Facebook used to have a profile video option, which was it went no, nowhere and Facebook killed it. So we'll see how this kind of plays out with LinkedIn. Uh, and also, thanks to uh, to a new profile video ring that will appear in feed and search, people will be aware that you have a profile video active on your page where they can learn more about you and your experience. Now, I kind of like that, you know, and as you show, listen to our show today, you will realize that YouTube is doing the something similar as well. So stay tuned. It's com- going to be covered in this episode as well. Okay. Lastly, LinkedIn is also introducing a subscribe bell, which will let a creator's audience receive, uh, which will allow a creator's audience to receive notifications whenever they publish new content, as well as the ability for creators to promote the newsletter via, uh, n- promote their newsletter in the featured section of the profile. Of course, that can be also turned off later on. Okay. Those were all the updates from LinkedIn. Now let's move on to the next update. It is from Meta. So Meta has announced a virtual messaging event called Conversations. Yes, Conversations. And it's going to be held on May 19, 2022. We will obviously going to bring you updates from that, uh, you know, event as and when it happens. So stay always pace to listen to the Twim show. Now, this is quite a few, uh, it's a quite a new angle for Meta, which I think Meta is trying to become a conversation or uh, yeah, conversation platform. Because if you see, there are this, uh, the three other updates that we did not cover in this episode of Twim Show, but I will quickly manage, qu- quickly mention is that Meta made some changes in Instagram uh, messaging as well as Facebook messaging options, like, you know, how you can tag people, how you could re- use shortcuts and, you know, how you can put things in silent mode, things like that. That's kind of, and that, those updates, those three updates, in addition to this event itself, tells me that Meta is realizing, you know what, we need to focus on communication. Yeah, we have done a lot. We have connected two plus billion users around the world or two plus billion people around the world. And, you know, our growth is stagnating. Where should we focus on? Yeah, virtual reality is not something that's going to happen today or next month or next year. It's going to take some time to shift. Where do we focus? Let's focus on conversations. Well, people need to communicate. So this kind of tells me that's going to be their theme and they're going to push more and more into that. And that's just my opinion. With that, let's move into the next update. Which is next update is also is from Snapchat. Snapchat has announced their fourth uh, partner summit, and, uh, and this is the year they're calling it back to reality. What will happen? We'll see. Usually, Snapchat in this kind of events or any platform in this kind of events, they announce new features, they show off new things they're working on, things like that. Again, this event is going to take place on April twenty eighth. We are going to put a link to the sign up page in our show notes. So if you are interested, you can always click on that and sign up for the things. But if you're not interested, what we do as always is we are going to go ahead and bring you the must know highlights from those shows from this event uh, onto this you know podcast and so that you can kind of stay tuned, uh, you can kind of stay up to date. Okay, with that. Now, this one is 
something from YouTube. Okay, YouTube is rolling out two new types of profile rings, one with live marker and one without to represent the different forms of content. This is part of YouTube's larger effort to include more conventional social app functionality into the, obviously, the YouTube app. Now, this is something what I was alluding to when I was talking about LinkedIn, like, you know, YouTube also has now, you know, this rings around your profile. And then if someone sees a ring, they know you are live. Uh, the word live shows up if it's live. And if it's not there, uh, obviously, you know, you're not live, but you have uh, some stories or something like that. Okay. Furthermore, YouTube has expanded its community tab available to additional ch channels as well as adding shorts, reactions, and other well-known social networking platform alternatives to its offers. Last but not least, YouTube is lowering the bar for its uh, for using its mention tools. Mentions allow you to include another channel's username in the title or description of your video, and the other channel will be notified of the mention in their inbox. Previously, this option was only available to channels with 500 subscribers, but YouTube has now made the mentions function open to all channels. This might be a terrific method to start collaborations on the app, as well as getting your films or videos in front of people, in front of related people who might subsequently magnify your work. But look at the opportunity here, guys. Now, there's going to be a new segment created where they're going to be like, hey, you know what? I can, I have a follower, let's do partnership. I have a follower, you pay me and I will tag you. Things like that. Those whole influencer marketing, it's going to become, it's going to become like an, inf it's becoming, it's going to pay, pave the way for, it has already paved the way for influencer marketing on YouTube. That's it, right? It's going to be like that and that's very, very good. I like it because, for example, our channel is very small on YouTube. I wouldn't mind getting our channel, this podcast in front of the right audience and actually paying for something like that, right? Because I know we have something that will help other people stay on. Of course, we don't make money from this, but I'm just saying. So this is great. I am excited about this update, okay? Next up is on YouTube is YouTube ads uh, drops maximize live bidding. Again, this is something an overcomplicated uh, ad method ad bidding type that was barely used they launched it in 2018 really it was so complicated i think no one really used it just because you know it's just like so many steps and also to do this you have to work with a youtube representative so youtube just came out and says you know what effective immediately which is effective April 1st, we're going to kill it. We didn't even give a, you know, sons, they didn't even give a timeline. They just said, we're going to kill it. That kind of tells me that it never went anywhere, this bidding strategy that they launched in 2018. However, keep in mind, when they launched it back in 2018, they said they used uh, CoverGirl's lamp, Lash Blast Mascara. Uh, as an example, they said, hey, CoverGirl's Lash Blast Mascara used this YouTube maximized lift bidding option and they were able to get 2x return on their ad investment. You know, all these platforms always hype up these numbers, right? And why I'm bringing it up to kind of tell you and show you, demonstrate to you that you don't believe everything that comes out in a uh, news release from these big platforms because sometimes they do uh, embellish a little bit, if that's the right word, right? Uh, but it's gone. That's all you need to know. If you didn't know what it was, guess what? You didn't miss anything. Okay. With that, uh, the next thing I want to talk about YouTube is YouTube videos can now be shared via Snapchat camera. So basically, uh, back in 2020, uh, Snapchat allowed an option to embed your tweets directly into twi uh, Snapchat snaps. Now in 2022, they're allowing you to embed your videos dir uh, directly into Snapchat snaps. Why is this a good thing? Look at this way. You Snapchat has like, you know, there's only, so you can only have a video length. I think there is up to a minute. So if you have a longer video, you can always link it back to your YouTube. So if someone catches the snap and they can link on it and they go directly into YouTube, obviously it's a win-win for both. It's a bigger win for YouTube because now you end up watching the video on YouTube. But hey, uh, Snap is happy with this partnership. I just wanted you to know that um, this option exists. And if you think about it, like, you know, I was talking to a potential intern for summer uh, this past, this week, actually. And, you know, she was saying how she's good at Snapchat. And, you know, we may test it out. 
right? Again, we are not trying to build anything. I like to text, experiment things. And so we'll probably ex experiment this feature and other things in Snapchat to see what kind of, you know, uh, capabilities and things we can create and build on Snapchat. Anyway, with that, let's move on <clears throat> to a bigger platform called or a separate different platform called Twitter. Uh, Twitter has announced professional accounts are now available to all Twitter users worldwide. So what that basically means is previously you had to have in you know, apply, get permission from Twitter, you can apply and you can just get it right away. It's very easy to convert your regular profile to a professional account, given that, you know, you don't have some of the, um, you following, you follow the rules that Twitter has set out, which is like, you know, you must not have a history of repeatedly vi violating Twitter's user agreement. You must have a complete profile with an account name, bio and a profile picture or authentic you your authentic identity must be clear on your profile blah 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 all those details and how to do it are going to be in the show notes but for now just remember it pays to become a professional account on twitter no it's not going to give you the blue check mark that's a different thing uh, at least that's how i know it so but i would definitely if you're a business definitely get a professional account if you can while you can next up uh, on the Google SEO front, uh, Google has announced or Google has announced that they're going to give you a descriptive error reporting in Google Search Console around for structured data. What this basically means, again, if you're, if you are into SEO, you know, you use the schema and structured data to provide information. And sometimes you get an error message and you do not know what you are, what the error message entails or what it is pointing to, which element, because there's so many different elements that is there. So now Google is saying, hey, we, in addition to just giving you that, you know, hey, there's something wrong, we will try to pinpoint, we will help you pinpoint which particular element we're referring to. Because again, Google knows that something is wrong because that's why they throw an error message. So if they're throwing an error message, they might as well help you saying, you know, hey, such and such element is incorrect. We do understand it. Go fix it. And I kind of like it because, you know, a few weeks ago, as we were posting a job, we I posted a job onto our website, right? And of course, I use structured data uh, onto the job posting behind the scenes so that that job gets picked up by Google bot and shows up in jobs.google.com or Google jobs, right? And I did that. But while I was doing it, I was getting error messages. And it was like something, it wasn't really telling me exactly what it is. It was just like error in element blah name or something like that. But with this update that I see right now, it's going to help me identify, oh, exactly, I know which element you're referring to. At least it will help me and it will cut down the debug time. Now, if you're someone who doesn't know what structured data is, or if you're not using structured data, then obviously this doesn't apply to you. But however, if you are pay playing this SEO game, you need to know structured data. You cannot really play the SEO game without the structured data. Now, that's a good point for you as well. If you're hiring an SEO person and you can ask them around questions around SEO uh, structured data, and if they do not know, you know they're not the SEO guys or gals you want in your team. Okay, with that, let's move on to Google Merchant Center. Google has added uh, new insights or new reports in Google Merchant Center. Uh, this will begin to display a total traffic, impressions, conversion rate for free product listings. Uh, this will also help make it easy for you to gain a complete picture of your Google product display performance, while the new Price tool insights will assist merchants determine which of their products are completely overpriced, uh, and as well as the revenue impact of the price change. So, all in all, again, Google has the data. Google is trying to help you better position and you know give you ideas. Hey, your product is getting these things. The similar product is cheaper elsewhere. You're probably overpriced, and you're cutting this thing. Google has the data, so it's just feeding you some information back so that you can decide. You know, give you. Market data, competitive intelligence is what I would think. Okay, uh, it's a good update. Um, some of my clients have Google Merchant Centers because they sell products, they're e com. So, this is a good thing for them. Of course, they also run ads. Uh, but anyway, the last update on this week's episode is that Google uh, Trusted Store badge is now available for free shopping listings. So remember a few weeks ago, we covered how Google is going to give you a score in terms of, you know, uh, how fast your shipping is and, you know, your shipping cost and your return cost and the return window, things like that. And I kind of in the first episode covered this and then the next episode we said, you know, but Google has going to 
you know, tag you and he's going to measure you on those things. But if you try to game the system, Google is going to figure out. And if they figure out, they're going to basically uh, ban you from the system. Now Google is saying, you know what, based on these things, we are going to give you a trusted score and that trusted score is going to help you uh, sell more. Uh, in fact, Google in their announcement, they says, you know, it helps, you know, obscure businesses also. Um, it has helped obscure or unknown businesses or less unknown merchants do more shopping because, you know, now people feel uh, warm and fuzzy from buying from someone who they have never heard of before, which I agree. Now, I also have received email from Google because I am obviously uh, in my customers' merchant center account. I'm part of their merchant. I mean, I have access to it. So Google has email, sent out an email, and I received a copy of that email where it says, "Hey, your you know shipping speed is excellent. Your shipping cost is excellent. Your return cost is comparable." Right, and that kind of tells me that uh, we are within uh, you know. The industry norms, because Google basically marks us as excellent, comparable opportunity or opportunity. And by opportunity means that, hey, you need to pull up your socks and do better. That's what it is. So that made me feel good that, you know, that's how we got a score back from Google. And then now it's going to show up to our free listings. And obviously, all my customers are going to get uh, more sales. So that's win-win. If you are not using Google Merchant Center, this is a high time you use. It doesn't matter whether you're Shopify, it doesn't matter you're on Amazon, you need to use this because it's just basically free traffic, right? Free eyeballs, free PR. And if you if if you love money, you're gonna love this. If you hate money, then don't do it. Leave money on the table. Let your competitors get the money from you. Okay, already folks, that's it for this week in marketing. Now you know everything to be in the know. If you'd like to read more, make sure you visit our show page where you'll find the links to the articles. Once again, this is your host, Adi Islam, signing off. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in this week. It was a pleasure to serve you all. Hit the subscribe button so that you remember to sign on next week. Same place, same time for another round of This Week in Marketing.